When it comes to the evolution of animals, for most of them, it's a history built upon countless struggles and hardships. However, there is a particular group of animals that gives me a sense of being favored by a higher power through their evolutionary history. While reading related research papers, I often feel like they are on the verge of extinction, but then on the next page, they suddenly flourish again. I turn another page, and it seems like they are about to perish, but soon after, they miraculously revive. That's the kind of feeling I get. This miraculous group of animals is none other than insects. The story of insects begins around 440 million years ago, in the Silurian period. At that time, the terrestrial ecosystem was just forming, marking the first wave of animal colonization of land. Among these animals, the arthropods with their waterproof exoskeleton had a natural advantage. The ancestors of insects were also part of this land colonization force. Alongside them were the ancestors of the Calicerata arachnids mentioned earlier, and the ancestors of the Myriapoda, which weren't discussed before, as well as some other supporting arthropods. Together, they co-evolved in the nascent terrestrial ecosystem. Around 40 million years later, the Calicerata gave rise to some earlier spider species, the top predators on land, while herbivorous creatures like spider mites and harvestmen also emerged. Meanwhile, the Myriapoda didn't fall behind. Early millipedes and centipedes were the largest terrestrial animals for quite some time. However, as the Calicerata and Myriapoda thrived, the ancestors of insects didn't seem to make significant progress. The only slight advancement was an increase in their diversity and a slight increase in size. Until the early Carboniferous period, approximately 330 million years ago, the ancestors of insects didn't show any signs of rising. Their evolution seemed to indicate that they were destined to continue living as they were. For example, their bodies became elongated and slender, with most of their appendages regressing, leaving only three pairs of walking legs for locomotion. This adaptation helped them move quickly through complex terrain, such as leaf litter. They also specialized their three pairs of appendages into mouthparts, which aided in selecting and consuming food in nutrient-rich soil. Later on, a subgroup developed lateral plates on their backs, which served either as a defensive structure or for temperature regulation. This configuration was quite common among terrestrial arthropods at the time. Eventually, these plates evolved into movable structures, and that's how insects took flight. From then on, insects became the most successful group of arthropods on land. Do you feel like you skipped a chunk of the plot? I swear it's really not my fault. The earliest known flying insects lived around 325 million years ago during the Carboniferous period. They were the Delitzala, and there is a rare 65 million year fossil record between them and their non flying ancestors. This period is known as the Hexapod Gap. Following this period, insects became the only animal group capable of dominating the skies for the next 100 million years. During the Carboniferous era, Earth was essentially a world covered in rainforests. Tall trees flourished everywhere, with nutrient-rich buds and spores at their canopies. As the first creatures capable of flying through the air, insects undoubtedly had a significant advantage in accessing food. This instantly made insects one of the most abundant animal groups at that time. Simultaneously, the thriving vegetation led to the highest levels of oxygen in Earth's history. This not only satisfied the oxygen requirements for insect flight, but also allowed arthropods to break through size limitations. Consequently, the largest insects in history, like the Meganeura dragonfly, with a wingspan of up to 70 centimeters, comparable to the size of a pigeon, effortlessly outperformed nearly all other arthropods as they soared through the skies above the early arachnids. We know that later flying vertebrates sacrificed a pair of appendages for flight, but the evolution of flight in insects seems to have been a direct gift from a higher power. It didn't compromise the evolutionary potential of insects in any way. In fact, wings increased their evolutionary capabilities. 
Soon, a group of insects with even stronger flying abilities and the ability to fold their wings when not in use emerged. The Neoptera. With the powerful flight ability of Neoptera insects, one pair of wings was sufficient for their flying needs. This means that the redundant second pair of wings gained complete freedom in evolution. Over the next millions of years, this resulted in a remarkable diversification of the insect family, leading to a multitude of species. However, in the early Carboniferous period, the Neoptera insects hadn't yet evolved into the diverse groups we see today. Most of them chose to evolve their anterior pair of wings into protective covers to safeguard their posterior wings. Among them, the order Coleoptera, commonly known as beetles, took this strategy to the furthest extent. Their front wings became smooth and hard, enclosing themselves in a protective shield, while carefully folding their hind wings inside. This adaptation eliminated concerns of dirtying or damaging their wings. As a result, beetles spread into narrow or dirty habitats that were typically challenging for other insects to access. Hence, we see dung beetles in feces, burying beetles in corpses, rove beetles underground, and water beetles on the water's surface. They occupied numerous ecological niches. Presently, there are approximately 400,000 known species within the order Coleoptera, making it the largest order in the entire animal kingdom. But it doesn't end here. Superhero characters in movies rarely possess only one superpower. They continually reveal new abilities as the plot progresses. Similarly, insects acquired a remarkable ability later on. Holo metabolism, also known as complete metamorphosis. Previously, I mentioned that echinoderms had a unique form of metamorphosis, but I must admit my mistake, because insects' holo metabolism is essentially the same. Those caterpillars are, in fact, like a mobile and self-feeding placenta. The true insect body is hidden within the body of the caterpillar, but not as a complete embryo as you might imagine. Instead, it is a scattered collection of small plate-like structures known as imaginal discs. When it's time for pupation, the entire larva melts away, providing nutrients for these imaginal discs. Each disc then develops into a different organ, and eventually, assembles into an adult insect. Just think about it. It's truly mind-boggling. It sounds like something out of an extraterrestrial life form. The origin of this metamorphic development, much like the evolution of insect wings, remains unverified. It seems to have appeared suddenly around 300 million years ago in the late Carboniferous period. This growth pattern greatly increased the developmental flexibility of insects making them a bug in the animal evolutionary program. They spread into all terrestrial environments, except for the oceans. Within the insect class today, including the dominant four families, such as the order Coleoptera, all of them exhibit complete metamorphosis. Typically, after gaining superpowers, the protagonist not only focuses on romance, but also takes it upon themselves to save the world. Insects are no exception. Despite animals being perceived as agile and formidable, it is the seemingly harmless photosynthetic organisms like plants that have caused catastrophic disasters throughout Earth's history. Around 2.8 billion years ago, cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, triggered a mass extinction event called the Great Oxygenation Event. This event nearly wiped out all life on Earth. Additionally, the most severe ice age event in Earth's history, the Huronian glaciation, occurred approximately 700 million years ago. The snowball Earth event lasted for nearly 100 million years, and it had some connections with the emergence of multicellular algae. Furthermore, after the colonization of land by plants, especially trees, they vigorously absorbed nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium from depths up to two meters. They grew tall and lush, depleting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere time and time again. Consequently, Earth entered a vicious cycle. Plants grew excessively, causing global cooling, followed by forest collapses, leading to global warming. Then, plants grew rapidly again, continuing this cycle. This cycle indirectly led to the late Devonian mass extinction event, 
and directly caused the most severe ice age event in the history of animal evolution. It was the Carboniferous rainforest collapse. Therefore, we can say that unless plants go extinct, the disasters won't stop. Or even if plants die, it wouldn't matter because the carbon elements they absorbed would still be trapped in their remains, eventually transforming into coal, sealed underground, and unable to return to the atmosphere. Although early fungi and certain protists could decompose dead plants, wood is quite hard. The decomposition efficiency of these delicate organisms couldn't keep up with the growth rate of trees. That's when insects came into the picture. In the process of feeding on resin and fungi in decaying wood, insects, with their powerful jaws, inevitably chewed and fragmented the wood. Moreover, many insects burrowed into the wood, inadvertently making the decaying wood more porous and loose. This greatly enhanced the efficiency of fungal decomposition. Not to mention that later on, a group of insects from the order Blattidae evolved into termites, whose guts harbor symbiotic trichonympha that can break down cellulose, allowing them to directly feed on wood. It can be said that insects disrupted this historical cycle. From the Mesozoic era onward, Earth rarely experienced excessively destructive Ice Age events. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that they saved the world. However, while insects were busy saving the world, they couldn't save themselves. After the Carboniferous rainforest collapsed 300 million years ago, the insect family came close to extinction. After the Carboniferous rainforest collapse, the Earth entered the Permian period. The collapse of the rainforest had already pushed insects to the brink of extinction. Carbon dioxide became trapped in the remains of plants, causing the Earth to enter a generally cold era. At the same time, the oxygen levels decreased along with a decrease in forest coverage. These conditions led to a reduction in the size of insects, which, in turn, made it even more challenging for them to adapt to the cold environment. It seemed like insects were on the verge of extinction. However, at that critical moment, the Siberian supervolcano erupted, triggering the most devastating mass extinction event in Earth's history, known as the Permian-Triassic mass extinction. For the next four million years, insects disappeared from the fossil record. At this point, the suffering of insects was far from over. After the mass extinction, with the complete formation of the Pangaea supercontinent and the massive release of carbon dioxide from the Siberian volcanoes, Earth entered the Triassic period, which was the hottest and driest period in history. Deserts dominated the terrestrial landscapes of the Earth. The tall plants that early insects relied on for survival almost vanished. According to the plot development, insects should have gone extinct. However, what happened next completely surprised me. Around 234 million years ago, during the Carnian stage of the Triassic period, something unimaginable occurred. Earth suddenly started to rain. The entire world experienced the largest rainfall since the emergence of animals. This event, known as the Carnian Pluvial Episode, lasted for two million years and transformed the deserts of the world into tropical rainforests. Even more astonishingly, this heavy rainfall also reshaped the plant life on Earth. Seed plants became the dominant players on land, and their seeds and pollen provided abundant nutrients for insects. As a result, insects not only revived, but also immediately experienced a new burst of species diversity. If you were to say that there was a supernatural force helping insects at that time, I wouldn't find any reason to object. After this heavy rainfall, many insect groups that we are familiar with today emerged. For example, mosquitoes and flies from the order Diptera began to thrive. Even today, their larvae still require a moist environment for development a remnant memory of that ancient downpour. So, the idea of mosquitoes sucking dinosaur blood in Jurassic Park is not entirely fictional. However, insects did not always have the upper hand against vertebrates. From a certain perspective, the coevolution between insects and plants gradually made flight a profitable way of life, which in turn spurred vertebrates to take to the skies. However, 
vertebrates initially had a clumsy approach to conquering the sky. They attempted to grow wings out of thin air, just like insects. But their wings were unable to flap, rendering this method ineffective. It wasn't until the emergence of pterosaurs, or flying reptiles, that the situation changed. In fact, insects larger than 10 centimeters in length were still quite abundant until the mid-Triassic period. However, with the appearance of pterosaurs, insects shrank to the familiar sizes we know today. This could be considered one of the rare failures in the evolutionary history of insects. However, this failure opened up new possibilities for their evolution. Starting from the Jurassic period, when the land became fertile again, the insect family experienced another era of prosperity. During this time, a group of insects known as the order Hymenoptera, which includes wasps and ants, began to thrive. They are carnivorous insects that mainly prey on other insect larvae. Initially, they laid their eggs on plant leaves, and the hatched larvae ambushed passing insect larvae. However, some clever Hymenoptera insects learned to lay their eggs directly on other insects or their eggs, even inside them. This allowed the larvae to hatch and feed directly on the host. This gave rise to various parasitic wasps. Furthermore, some Hymenoptera insects constructed nests or burrows. They would go out to hunt and bring back prey to feed their offspring. However, considering the high reproductive rate of insects, raising dozens of offspring can be quite challenging. As a result, some species of Hymenoptera larvae, after maturing, would temporarily remain in the nest instead of leaving. They would assist their mother in nest building and hunting. The pinnacle of this evolutionary path is when the mother takes on all the reproductive tasks, while most family members completely lose their reproductive abilities and assist the mother in ensuring the continuation of their species. By now, you may have already thought of ants and bees, as their true sociality might have emerged in this way. By the late Jurassic period, around 160 million years ago, various wasps and ants had become a significant force within the insect family. Then, in the Cretaceous period, around 140 million years ago, fate once again favored the insect family. During the Cretaceous period, there was another significant change in the plant groups. Angiosperms, also known as flowering plants, began to bloom abundantly. From then on, the common scenario for pollination was insects and flowers. Among the diverse array of flowers during the Cretaceous period, a beautiful insect took flight, known as Calligramata. Indeed, during the Mesozoic era, it was not the commonly seen butterflies and bees flying among the flowers, but rather a group of insects known as Calligramata, representing the order Neuroptera. They possessed vibrant and extravagant wings, as well as long, coiled proboscises resembling today's butterflies. In fact, it would be more accurate to say that the beautiful wings and proboscises of butterflies are a replication of those seen in Calligramata. Although butterflies, belonging to the order Lepidoptera, are also an ancient family, most of the Lepidoptera during the Mesozoic era were rather dull in color, small in size, and primarily fed on plants directly. It wasn't until the late Cretaceous period that some Lepidoptera species began to evolve towards feeding on flower nectar. However, Lepidoptera have their own unique feature, which is the presence of scales on their wings. These scales are tiny, and when we handle butterflies, we often leave behind a powdery residue on our hands, which is actually the scales from their wings. These scales are easily shed when confronted with sticky spider webs or the tongues of vertebrate predators, allowing the Lepidoptera to escape. Additionally, the scales themselves are not only colorful, but also possess intricate structures that can produce structural colors through various optical principles. This complexity of coloration in Lepidoptera far surpasses that of the earlier Calligramata. Later, as birds became increasingly dominant as the primary predators of insects, the order Lepidoptera developed more complex coloration to deceive birds. Their advantage gradually became apparent, and after the mass extinction in the Cretaceous period 65 million years ago, familiar butterflies and moths emerged from the wastelands, 
seizing the ecological niche once occupied by Calligrammeter. This success elevated the Lepidoptera to become the final member of the four major insect families today, alongside the Coleoptera, Diptera, and Hymenoptera. Their prosperity, in turn, contributed to the rise of flowering plants as the dominant flora of the new era. Apart from these four major families, there are numerous other fascinating insect groups, but attempting to cover them all would be an immense undertaking. Throughout the past 300 million years in this harsh game of evolution, various animals have been striving for survival. However, it seems that only insects have been favored by the hand of destiny since their appearance. They flourish as a group before fully unleashing their evolutionary potential, even to the extent of transforming the entire world. It is truly perplexing whether insects adapt to the environment or the environment adapts to insects.